So our program is relatively simple. So the, the, it's a critical part of our pavement preservation program, but essentially we blow the crack and we, we fill it with, with product. State of Nevada, roughly 100,000 square miles, population of roughly 3 million. NDOT has roughly 1,800 employees. So we have roughly 5,000 centerline miles, which is pretty low for this group, it looks like. Uh, 131 centerline miles of rigid pavement for PCC. The rest of it's a flexible pavement, and 22% of our pavement roughly needs pavement preservation or rehab immediately. Uh, for all of those uh, miles of roadway, we have roughly 29 units that are basically uh, hot pots for, for crack sealing. So our class 40 unit is our is our uh, our class 40 unit is our uh, unit for crack sealing. It's basically a, a trailer. We uh, we typically self perform this work. We don't have rentals, and we typically typically don't con contract this work out. We do have an aging fleet. Our units are between 11 and 24 years old. Uh, they're frequently down for repairs, and that can be due to a lot of things. Part of that's due to the age of the equipment. Part of that's because some of our guys really hate this work. Occasionally we'll find a rag in the Craftco pot while we're working, so the, the, the rag goes in and it's down for two weeks to a month. So, part of the problem is we have a, a pretty green staff. We visited each of our major maintenance areas, went around, introduced ourselves, uh, asked which crew they were on, and we asked how long they've been with the department. Uh, it turns out being with the department for five years is senior, and that's amazing. And that's gonna really hurt us bad. So somehow we need to do something ourselves to make state employment more desirable. And I know one of the problems is our benefits are dwindling, and even if they give us pay raises, the take-home pay gets cut every year. So that's something we somehow have to figure out and solve. Uh, we have a bunch of different uh, variety with our class 40s. <coughs> Smallest of those. It's one of our bear cats. Another bear cat. Uh, that is the newest machine in our fleet. That's a 2004 Craftco EZ machine. Uh, we use open term con uh, contracts to purchase our product and while in theory all products are equal, asking our maintenance folks, all products are not equal. Uh, what's most important to our guys is we want product that, that basically won't track onto the roadway after we place it. We want it to set up quickly, but we want it to be fluid enough so that it doesn't gum up to the machine. Some of that's technique of our guys, some of that's the product itself. So we have an open term contract with Craftco four different types of product they provide for statewide use, and we use this stuff all over the state. And then there's uh, another one with Maxwell. This is typically used. These two, uh, these two products are typically used in the northern part of the state. Uh, it's important that for our open term contracts that the product comes in bricks that are easy for us to lift. We need to be able to get the bricks up into the Craftco pots. We want them between 25 and 30 pounds, and we want them on pallets so we can move them around. Uh, in District 2, I, I am from District 2, which is the northwestern third of the state. The state of Nevada has three districts. So the northwestern third is uh, Reno, Lake Tahoe. We go as far south as Hawthorne or as far east as Lovelock. So typically our crews have one compressor and one hot pot, sometimes two compressors. Uh, we aim for cracks that are a quarter inch or wider. Uh, we try to perform this work in the spring and the fall during cool weather. Uh, the, we, the, the priority for roads uh, is our chip seal program. So if we're planning to chip a road in the spring, we'll try and crack seal in the fall. If we're planning to chip seal in the fall, we'll try and crack seal the previous spring. We try to, we try to crack seal six months to a year in advance of a, ch of a chip seal. We also do this as part of our pavement preservation in general. We do this to basically seal and keep the water out of the roadways. So, but the highest priority is for chip seal. Our production rate is typically one to one and a half miles per day. Uh, that's uh, one to one and a half miles of two lane roadway. Uh, we can squeeze that to two miles if we work a little longer and if there's not too many cracks on the roadway. We also assume roughly one pallet uh, of product per mile. Uh, in District 2, on the western part of the District 2, it's mostly urban or mountains. That's Reno Metro, Carson Metro, or Lake Tahoe. Those crews prefer not to use an overband, and they use a disc and fill, the, and fill the crack just shy of the finished grade of the asphalt. On the east, those crews typically prefer to use a squeegee and have somewhat of an overband. And uh, uh, that's pretty much our production for the last few years. 
So 2013, we did 1,300 miles. 2014, 1,700 miles. 2015, 2,400 miles. Um, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to maintain that. And there's some interesting challenges there. We've cut back our 3R program significantly, and basically our primary focus is interstate. Outside of the interstate, we are not doing the pavement preservation we would normally do because of the usual budget cuts that everyone else is experiencing. Uh, we're also, we have new politicians that want more focus on the cosmetic side of roadway maintenance, so they really want us to step up weed abatement, weed removal, and trash removal, which sucks up a lot of resource. The other interesting challenge we have is for the last 15 years or so, we've been snubbing our nose at the EPA for stormwater, and that's burned us bad. So we now have huge focus with existing resource to basically change and move towards stormwater mitigation uh, and best management practices, which is taking resource away from activities such as crack sealing, uh, roadway sweeping, uh, ditch maintenance, et cetera. All of the other normal roadway maintenance activities we would expect a road crew to do. Pounds of filler used and cost, which really doesn't correlate well with the lane miles, but I guess some cracks suck more product than others. And labor hours that we spend doing crack seal per year, which is significant. These are statewide numbers. Uh, we have historically ignored our pavement concrete, uh, our Portland cement concrete surfaces. And that's starting to affect us right now. Uh, so we are now in a mode where we're trying to train and educate ourselves how to do this with, with our own forces. We are also experimenting with some con contract uh, crack sealing and, and pavement maintenance, which is, which is a new trend for us. Uh, over the past five years, we've done three different roadway segments with Diamond Grind. We have done a dowel retrofit on I-80 for several miles. Uh, roughly 2.5% of our centerline miles are rigid pavement. Uh, we have experimented just this year on a test section on I-580. We're looking at four different products and, and we're, we're trying to figure out which of those products works best for various types of applications. And then afterwards, we're going to do a profile grind uh, basically to, uh, to finish off the surface. The four products we're using, we have a, Ca a Craftco Techcrete, a Global Sealer Technologies Elephant Armor, Willamette Valley Polyquick Fast Patch, and then Marketing Associates Fibercrete. So the Elephant Armor so far is working out really well for us. We, we routed a crack four inches wide, two inches deep. Uh, so far, again, this is brand new product. We're still in the construction phase. We've just done the diamond grind. Uh, it seems to be holding up. Uh, it can be placed quicker than Techcrete and Fibercrete, which is interesting on the constructability side. So now we're going to see how it lasts and see how well it works out long term on the maintenance side. Techcrete, uh, our, our use of Techcrete and Fibercrete, it's similar products. The packaging is a little different. The way we receive the products a little different. Uh, and there's some subtle differences. Again, we routed a crack four inches wide by two inches deep. So far, it is see, uh, seeming to hold up. Uh, it's also, we learned it's important to communicate with our vendor. We didn't tell our vendor we were doing a diamond grind after we put in the, the product, so the bulking stone didn't go in. We tried to diamond grind without the bulking stone and made a mess. So after we added the bulking stone, everything seemed to work out just fine. Same with the fibercrete. Uh, again, we routed a crack four inches wide, two inches deep. Seems to be holding up great. Again, we're still in the construction phase, but so far our application seems to be solid and it seems to be working out fine and it's holding up to the diamond grind. Uh, the poly quick fast patch, minimum preparation required, did not need to be routed. Uh, uh, we basically sandblast, clean, blow, and then put in the product. We've had multiple failures so far. That's not necessarily a reflection on the product. That's more likely a reflection on our experience with the product and with PCC uh, crack sealing in general. So we're, we're going to try and work more with this product and figure out what it is we need to do differently to make this product work. But we're also experimenting we're also experimenting with our maintenance crews with various different types of products. I know we're working with Craftco on, on a uh, crack sealing product basically on the, from the maintenance perspective, something we can do uh, better than cold mix asphalt thrown into a patch that's just historically has worked poorly for us. 
We have some challenges, like every agency. We have aging equipment. Uh, we're looking to find a way to rent or lease equipment. We've, we have typically augmented our fleet because of our inability to replace or augment the fleet with owned equipment. We have an aggressive program to rent equipment. We rent water trucks, sweeper trucks, uh, self-propelled brooms or street sweepers. We rent uh, pretty much anything we can get our hands on. We rent crash cushions. We rent Vactor trucks for $12,000 a month. So we're going to try and find a way and see if we can rent some of these hot pots the, to be a little more reliable and, and, and to basically step up our production rate. Looking forward, we're working towards a more aggressive PCC crack sealing program. I look forward to renting new equipment and then uh, looking at new sealant products. I guess some of the challenges I, I kind of glossed over. Uh, we have had significant reductions in 3R funding, which increases the expectations for our maintenance crews to hold our roads together. Uh, we basically have the same number of crews we've had since the 1970s, but more expectations. So that's really not a real ex realistic expectation. We do have a high attrition rate. We have lots of new people, uh, and some of these people we pick up from construction, but typically what we're hiring, for the most part, we're hiring people with no construction experience, no maintenance experience, and we're training them. We're training them with on-the-job training. Uh, we cut back on our formal training programs. We've cut back on our rodeos. We cut back on our maintenance academies as cost-cutting measures, and that's simply not going to work for us anymore. So. Our, our human resources is going to partner with us to redevelop and even by contract if necessary to reestablish real training programs to basically hire people and turn them into roadway maintenance employees. So looking forward, uh, more aggressive crack sealing program, working towards renting new equipment and looking forward, uh, we're looking at new sealants and products. That's pretty much all I got. Alrighty. Thank you.